What's happening, peeps? Bill Cormalis from Modern Baseball Art. Um, I'm just going to go right into um, the thank yous from the people that uh, sent me stuff. I think I'm just going to start out the show that way. So, um, one, oh, hey, the other day, or maybe it was even this morning, my lady says, you seem nervous. No. I'm not nervous when I'm talking. If you ever see me looking down, I got a table full of stuff that I want to talk to you about and I want to grab the right thing. So the first little batch I want to talk to you about is from uh, Instagram uh, person that goes by Paw Paw Breaks, another card collecting uh, uh, person. and. They thought that I could use these within the art that I make. So actually, these are pretty sweet cards. So uh, check that out. Blue Sapphire. Nice little uh, Bryce Harper right there. And some some nobodies. And these are the these are the donors right here. So these are the guys who get cut up for the for the cause. So Paw Paw Breaks. You the man. Um, another, another person that I actually go a ways back with, like in the real world, not just Instagram, but like in the physical world that we used to do, his name is Greg. And I met him through, uh, an organization called the baseball reliquary. And the baseball reliquary is an, is an organization that sets up, uh, baseball theme, historical type art shows and they stage them in the California library system and uh, I mean lucky me I have my work shown in these things up and down California and it's nice exposure and it's also in an educational setting so uh, that's nice well Greg is a killer artist himself and a big San Francisco Giants fan uh, for life. And uh, he sent me this the other day to add to my Will Clark collection. And this is a newspaper clipping of uh, Will Clark and the Giants owner hugging it out after the, the playoffs in 1989. I collect stuff like that. Uh, I, I literally have... And I'll have to bust them out for you guys. But I have... Jeez, that was, that was embarrassing. Um, TV guides that came in the newspaper. Local ones, too. So San Gabriel Valley, where I'm from. And then uh, I have one that's from the, the desert. And these are just random. I mean, I couldn't tell you if anybody else has anything like this. But stuff that I kept because it had Will Clark on the cover of a TV guide. So that was pretty cool. Greg... Like I mentioned, is also a really awesome artist, and uh, he's doing, he's making baseball cards, and he's doing them on playing cards. So that's a Will Clark that he made me on a playing card, and I kind of incorporated it into a piece of art right there. So that's just oh, check that me. Look at that's a shirt that has Will Clark on it, and that's 1989 or 90 right there. I've been collecting Will Clark for a long time. One on the Giants. And uh, here goes one that he made me of Will Clark on the Rangers. Really bitching. I mean, you should check his page out. I'll put it uh, in the, uh, the, the comment section uh, who he is. Uh, I think it goes by G-J-E-Z. His name is Greg, though. Let me show them both to you one more time. Pretty cool stuff. A lot of people doing a lot of cool, unique stuff. And some people can't tell the difference who they are. So get your medium straight, people. Separate yourself from the pack. All right, so another... another person uh that that sent me some cool stuff reached out to me the other day that they're, they're uh they go by oh i think it's japan travel ball like i said I'll, I'll let you know who it is they reached out to me 
and they had this <laughs> now I have this and uh, you know a lot of good trades happening out there in the Instagram world and uh, purchases meeting up people all kinds of stuff it's things that you won't, wouldn't find on maybe eBay but somebody hits you up in the DM and well they got a sweet sweet crispy Will Clark autograph with a certification so pretty cool and along with uh, that I mean this is really cool I regarding baseball I paint it and make art for a couple of reasons one of them is nostalgia when I was a kid I mean, really loved baseball played baseball and uh, it was a thing that I share with my family too some of my best memories are regarding my really old grandmother and me and the family going to the Dodger games so history is a big part of it and uh, I choose to paint that in a in a in a happy regard I don't really make much mad or sad art I don't know why I just don't really direct my energies toward toward that part of life it's enough as of as it is and uh, anyway so I paint from a happy place so the historical aspect is one and check this out this is I mean this isn't an old card but it's telling me something and I like to learn from it I'm just gonna read his name while I'm looking at it then I'll show you the picture he goes by Atsuyoshi Harry Saisho this is cool and I'm gonna read from the back of this card Jeez, if I can, man. Here, I'll just read it. Called the leading light in the Japanese athletic colony, Harry Saisho was one of the founding fathers of Issei Baseball. Born in uh, Japan, Harry was the catcher and captain of the championship Miyazaki High School team. After coming to the United States in 1903, he became the manager and captain of the Amateur Los Angeles Nanka and Japanese Baseball Association. This is Japanese baseball in Los Angeles. I mean, this is really cool and I did not know about this. So, uh, nice to learn something. And uh, Japan Travel Ball helped me out there. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, here goes a card from the Japanese Pro Ball. I like this stuff. I mean, there's base baseball is a pretty popular sport around the world. And uh, they talk about it's losing popularity in America for whatever reason. Quit changing the damn game. Shit. That'll, you know, that'll keep people looking. Quit changing it. I don't care if you pimp a home run. I mean, that's fun, right? But not if your team's down. Come on common sense all right so uh here goes a couple pieces uh that i added to the will clark collection it's a pretty rare one this is uh the regular one the blue one i guess is a little bit more special so pretty stoked to have that and uh a bunch of other cards will clark that I mean, the, these thick jersey cards, they're just hard to fit in the binder. So I'm trying to figure out, uh, uh, dude, look at that bat. Oh, that's tight. It's all stuff I need to figure out. Oh, this one can go in, the, go in a binder. That one too. But any of that thick stuff, this is a really, really, th I mean, man, they, oof, that's a thin piece of wood right there. Just... Bunch of fun Will Clark stuff right there. Now, here goes, I uh, wanted to show you, uh, I don't know if you guys have been seeing some of my <coughs> T420 cards. Well, here's the original drawings. These are pretty fun. And then just throw them in the zigzag and put them in the, uh, the one touch. San Diego's finest right here. The new... And the old. I'm still waiting on this uh, thing right here, but we know 
what Tony Gwynn was. That was a bona fide superstar for years and years and years. He has a com he has a total of one season under his belt and a three hundred million con three hundred dollar million contract. So watch out for that. Yeah, I drew these leading up to the Super Bowl. <laughs> you remember these guys? Here, we'll go like this. Ah, silky. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and be nasty. Young superstar, Acuna. Jackie, this is the this is the ink stained card right there, not the print. Jeets and Pete's. Big Jose. Yeah, Ricky amongst the clouds. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the cards and stuff that I'm going to show and I want to show you a piece of art that I make I'm always trying to switch it up. I'm always trying to attack different angles So here's a a Will Clark Lego head that I did and uh, Anywho I can paint your guy like that, too The little paint dots Anyhow, this was fun. I, I said I, I come up with ideas and then I just have to like jump on it before uh it floats my mind. Hey, right on. Thanks, Seth. We can do a big Don Mattingly with a sweet stash. Ooh, yeah. I was watching Trevor Bauer today. I watch him a lot, but talk about it today. And he was talking about The MLB trying to do a little cracking down on uh, on uh, sticky stuff. He seems to be a big proponent against it. Oh no, self-made earthquake. Sorry. He's totally against it. Sergio's always a a nice a nice pickup, and uh, he's spoken out a, a lot spoken to the MLB about it just been vocal about you know the use of, of sticky stuff and how it affects the, the uh, rotation on a baseball and he kind of actually even conducted a spirit an experiment on his own during a game and it it it, it is a does enhance your performance and what what's to do Garrett Cole I guess he's like Garrett Garrett he knows Garrett Cole uses that stuff and uh, blah 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 this and that. So I, I mean, I want I wonder what you guys think about all that, like performance enhancing drugs, sticky stuff, people trying to get an edge. Do you play natural? Do you do, you do the edge? And it looks like uh, everybody's just trying to get an edge. And uh, right now, baseball is feeling the heat from the public on this, and I think they're trying to like. Oh, yeah, I, I believe so. I believe it's very, very prevalent. And once again, just like steroids and just like gambling and baseball, I feel like ba I feel like the MLB is just fine with it until the consensus publicly isn't fine with it. And then they act as if they're cracking down. So, you know, little things like that, changing the game, Talking about eliminating the shift, ooh, I can't even. Will Clark was a professional hitter. He'll go the opposite way on your ass if you know you weren't prepared. Tony Gwynn, same way. Wade Boggs, all those guys. I mean, professional hitters. You don't you don't shift them. And that's just something that I mean. They used to play this shift on Ted Williams, and he used to beat it somehow, being a pull hitter. So he was an exception. Anyways, I don't think they should mess with baseball like that. I also don't think that the National League should have a, a DH. I mean, there's some good hitters. 
and there's some pitches that probably want to hit too. Clayton Kershaw can touch the ball with his bat a lot. It's not a bad hitter. Fernando Valenzuela was a two-time Silver Slugger. I believe, uh, oh, what wasn't he? Mike Hampton, he's played for the Rockies and a few other teams. I mean, th there's some really good athletes out there that would uh, love when they pitch to keep the bat in their hand. So anyways, that's just a topic that I wanted to bring up. And, and I, I'm old school, you know. Um, <clears throat> I was watching... Uh, Will Clark was being interviewed by, uh, oh boy, why am I having a hard time? Uh, he was a former baseball player, Eric something. Um, anyway, funny guy, all kinds of energy. And he was talking about Will Clark, or talking to Will Clark about things that happened in the game. And uh, he was just talking about that one slide that he had... Uh, had done in 1987 it was against the the st louis cardinals and uh he was talking about a situation where you know batters hit people <laughs> eric burns that's the guy he was talking to him the other day and he was you know breaking down the events that led to the fight and i guess the inning before vince coleman had just stole second and third and uh like nothing and you know that's when the, the baseball players like oh man we're gonna we're gonna bean that dude the next time or whatever and they didn't hit the they didn't hit him and uh make a long story short retaliation time came and will clark went in real 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 hot the second now today it's a completely illegal slide. In 1987, the rule was, if your hand can touch the bag, I mean, even if your arm is outstretched beyond capability, and your finger can touch that bag, you could go after, you can go after the, the fielder. Legs up in the air, try to knock him down, whatever it be. <clears throat> so, that and then he slid way past the bag. Shortstop kicked him. Ozzy Smith, boom! A big, huge melee happened. Well, that was baseball back then. They're they're really they're really softening up the game, and and a lot of it seems to be with uh, the the time the time the games are taking. Now, that's baseball. There's no time limit in baseball. They should have thought about that at the beginning if they wanted a, a, a time limit. I mean, baseball is one of those things that anything can happen almost at any time. And the fact that there's no time limit is kind of like what makes baseball special in, in regards to other sports. That That's how I feel. And uh, pace of play is, uh, I mean, look, you want the game to go faster? Don't use so many pitchers. How much time does it take? To, to get the guy to run in and do the warm-up pitches and then get to the next to the next batter I don't know just things like that it's just I enjoy baseball as it is I've been to a no hitter in real life I watched Kevin gross of the Dodgers no hit uh, uh, the will Clark era Giants at Dodger Stadium now that was a very very uneventful game on both sides Yet, that's the magic of baseball. It was a sloppy no-hitter. I got to be there. I got to watch a very slow-paced game. And it just is what it is. That's baseball. I, you don't, don't mess with it. That's how I feel. All right. Excuse me. I was on Facebook today. And uh, there was a list. Somebody compiled a list of who they thought were the greatest catchers of all time. And uh, it read like Josh Gibson, Louis Santop, Roy Campanella, Johnny Bench, and uh, one other, oh, Ivan Rodriguez. That broke down their, their specific top five. With Josh Gibson being the first. I love Josh Gibson. And by the way, there's a Roy Campanella painting that I set up because I was going to be talking about Roy Campanella. 
I I feel that Roy Campanella is the greatest catcher of all time. And I'm a, I'm just going to give you a couple of reasons why I think this. One in his 10 year and he won because he, he got to play in the major leagues. So in his 10 year major league career, he won 3 MVPs. That's pretty wild and he only played 10 years. Number 2 his, he threw up 57% of base runners trying to steal on him. I mean, that is huge. The kid had a cannon. And then number three, Roy Campanella's career ended like this when he got into a car accident uh, back in the day. You know, baseball players obviously didn't make the money that they made now. But even different, made a lot less. And somebody like Roy Campanella, when the, you know these guys have kids, off-season baseball, he was working at his liquor store, and when he was going home late at night in, in the cold, ice, his car slipped in it, boom, became a paraplegic or quadriplegic. I believe it's a quadriplegic, and his career is over. I mean, that's it, and so. I feel he would have had more to give baseball had that not happened to him. So that's my opinion on uh, on Roy Campanella and where he sits uh, atop uh, a major league catchers of all time. Um, that's that. I mean, I really... I have a couple things I like to talk about and, uh, and when I talk about them, it's, it's pretty much done. And uh, I just want you guys to have fun collecting. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like every day I'm, I'm meeting somebody new, somebody that's uh, you know, doing the same thing I am. And that's collecting. And a lot of times now it's also making art. So there's a lot of this uh, was it, gelling or meshing going on between these two worlds that I operate in. And it's pretty cool because, uh, uh, you know, just three years ago, four years ago, I wasn't collecting baseball cards. I had my collection, but I had been out for about 28 years. And uh, it's a new fun thing to me again. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun. And I hope you are too. I'm Bill Cormalis from Modern Baseball Art.